Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. President-elect Joe Biden now planning to roll out tens of millions of doses of vaccine in his first hundred days. I'm Alex Brashe in Washington. I'll have details coming up. And yeah, taking a live look out of the Alamo City, 43 degrees to start your Wednesday morning. We're checking with Justin Horn with your full forecast. Good morning. It is 430 this morning. I'm in for Mark. Thanks so much for starting your day with us. Yes, thanks for joining us. It is December 9th and a little cold outside for now, but did you enjoy yesterday afternoon? By I chance? did. Yesterday was gorgeous. Got nice. some sun. We were uh, we actually headed out to breaking news and we were standing out there for a while waiting for information. And I joked my photographer. I was like, I'm going to get a tan out here. <laughs> yes, got pretty that's, sunny. That's the beauty of South Texas, right? You know, uh, we can get into the 80s this time of year. We did get to 80 yesterday. We're thinking we may go a little bit warmer today. The record is 84, so we're in range there. A it's going to be warm, but we've got some cooler weather on the way too. So new record warmth today. These are the weather headlines here. Rain chances show up Friday morning. Uh, window for some light rain, maybe some fog and drizzle too. And then one change in the forecast that you may want to take notice of. Colder Sunday now, we think, with a chance of a shower. That's a bit of a change from what we've been talking about the last couple days. Temperature-wise, 37 Comfort, 36 Bandera, 44 Canyon Lake, 43 New Braunfels. We're going to see a huge swing in temperatures today. The air is still very dry, so it'll allow for that. 59, 9 o'clock, 75 noontime. We're up to 81, uh, perhaps, for a high today with westerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. We're going to break down that weekend forecast, let you know how much rain we could possibly receive. That's coming up here in just a few minutes. Well, let's get over to Nick now with a look at your morning traffic. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Justin, and good morning, everyone out there. Hope you're having a great start to your Wednesday morning. Okay, we're going to this accident right here. Eastbound IH10 at WW White's 18 wheel that's on fire there. Now, it looks like the left lane is blocked off. You have a little bit of a traffic buildup. My buddy Ishmael Trans guy says, not too bad. Traffic can still squeeze through if you are heading in that direction. All right, and heavy traffic here. This is westbound. If you're going westbound Northwest Loop 410, all right, so say coming from North Star Mall to 410, the on ramp to southbound IH10 West. We got some traffic built up there on that ramp. Keep that in mind for heading in that direction. I went from red to orange. Hopefully it gets a little bit better. And trans guide taking a look here. This is going to be, it looks like West Avenue there. And IH10 doesn't look bad at all. Max, Steph, back to you. Thanks, Nick. This morning, police asking for your help trying to find the person responsible for the shooting and killing of a 21-year-old woman. The situation happened back on December of 2017. Sarah Costa joins us live from home with those details and what police are now saying about this unsolved case. Good morning, Max. Yeah, well, police have a surveillance photo and they have a witness, but they are still searching for answers for who is responsible for this murder. Just take a look at your screen. Police say they need the community's help identifying the owner of that dark sedan with tinted windows and body damage the right rear passenger door. Police say a shooter was in that vehicle the night of December 2nd, 2017, that pulled up next to the vehicle that had 21-year-old Ditranique Hawkins in it. Police reports say that this happened at 11 p.m. that night and Hawkins was in the passenger seat of that car that was in the area of Foster Road and FM 78. When the dark sedan pulled up and the suspect fired multiple shots into the victim's car, one of the shots struck Hawkins and killed her. Now, if you know any information about this incident, you are urged to call Crime Stoppers, that number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. Remember, if your information leads up to an arrest, you may be eligible to earn up to $5,000 in cash. Live from home, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Max and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Well, this morning, there's growing optimism here across the United States after reports that the FDA emergency authorization for one of the COVID-19 vaccines is just a day away. This as the number of new cases, hospitalizations and deaths continue surging across the country. ABC's Alex Perche has the latest from Washington. A U.S. vaccine on the horizon. Pfizer is poised to get emergency approval for its COVID-19 vaccine as early as tomorrow after the FDA released an analysis showing how effective the shot was in trials. Look at that blue line. It's the low rate of people who got COVID after getting the vaccine. Now compare it with the red line. That's people on the placebo who got the virus. By the end of the study of those who got the real vaccine, only eight got infected. In the placebo group, 162 got COVID. President-elect Biden vows to distribute 100 million vaccines in his first 100 days. <laughs> President Trump is taking a victory lap. 
But in an interview with CNBC, Pfizer insiders now revealing that government officials turned down an offer for millions of extra doses, despite knowing the vaccine was safe and effective. I think they're betting that more than one vaccine is going to get authorized and there'll be more vaccines on the market. Now, the White House is reportedly negotiating with Pfizer to secure a second batch of vaccines, and they can't come soon enough. Health officials in California say the Thanksgiving surge is now hitting their state, a spike in cases and ICU beds filling up. We're running out of space, we're running out of supplies, and we have a shortage of providers. Emergency alerts now going out to cell phones, urging residents to stay at home. Washington state extending its lockdown another three weeks. Massachusetts now rolling back reopenings. And North Carolina announcing new curfews overnight. The stakes are dire. This is truly a matter of life and death. Hospitals in New Mexico are so full now they're transferring patients to neighboring states, Arizona, Texas, and Colorado. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. All right, well, let's take a look at where we stand with COVID-19 here at home this morning. The seven-day average now standing at 1,113 cases. That more accurately describing the daily number of cases here in Bear County every day. Nine more people dying in just the last 24 hours. Taking a look at our hospital numbers, 646 COVID-19 patients in our local hospital system. 20, 220 of them are in the ICU. 114 of them are on ventilators. And a reminder to send in your questions involving schools and the pandemic. KSET is teaming up with Trinity University for a series of live streams. Today will be the second installment centered around the impact on students, teachers, and learning. Tonight's conversation begins at 6.30 p.m. right here on KSET 12 and will continue on KSET.com at 7 o'clock. Time now, 4.36, 43 degrees out. And still ahead on GMSA, why some doctors and fertility experts say the pandemic is causing an egg freezing boom. And next, President-elect Joe Biden continuing to make big cabinet moves ahead of January 20th, Inauguration Day. We're going to tell you about his latest pick for housing and urban development. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, a nice cold 43 degrees for now, but uh, we are going to see some sunshine. We're going to check in with Justin after the break. Good morning and welcome back in your morning headlines. President-elect Joe Biden continuing to round out his cabinet. He's expected to nominate Ohio Representative Marsha Fudge as the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. The official announcement could come later this week. She would be the second African-American woman in his cabinet. Fudge has represented Ohio's 11th congressional district since 2008. She serves on a number of committees. Now, Biden has actually been reluctant to pick a lot of Democratic members of Congress because right now the Democratic Party only has a narrow margin in the House. And right now, because of that runoff election in Georgia, the uncertainty in the Senate. But Fudge represents a safe seat and was deemed an exception. The House of Representatives has passed this year's annual National Defense Authorization Act. The 700 excuse me, $740 billion bill enjoyed bipartisan support. The measure gives soldiers pay raises, modernizes military equipment, and requires more scrutiny before forces withdraw from Germany or Afghanistan. The president threatened to veto it because the measure does not repeal a law that shields internet companies for being liable from some content posted on their sites. The bill also limits how much money President Donald Trump can move for his border wall. The House has enough votes to override a presidential veto if President Trump acts on his threat, but the bill still must pass the Senate before it makes it to his desk. And another big blow in President Donald Trump's efforts to overturn election results. The U.S. Supreme Court denying a request from Pennsylvania Republicans to block President-elect Joe Biden's win in the Commonwealth's election. Now, President Donald Trump has said he thought the justices, including three of his own nominees, might step in and take his side in the case. Tuesday marked the safe harbor deadline for the state under federal law. That means that when Congress tallies the electoral votes in January, it must accept electoral results that were certified before the deadline. Important to mention, though, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton suing four battleground states, Georgia, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, in regards to their election results. And time. Oh, oh sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> time now, 442, 43 degrees out. And still ahead, holiday shopping might be a little more online this year. And while you're buying the perfect gifts, you might be making yourself the perfect target for scammers. We're going to have what to look out for next. And also next, why doctors are seeing a spike in women wanting to freeze their eggs during this pandemic. 
In this morning's GMA first look, is the pandemic causing an egg freezing boom? I think also that, you know, people are realizing there's many paths to parenthood. And that's kind of aligned now with this pandemic that people are not being forced, but potentially pushed more to pursuing kind of alternative parenthoods. 31-year-old Allison Stuckless making the decision to freeze her eggs in September. She says she made the choice once the pandemic hit and was able to take the time needed for the process. I do want a family, um, just not right now. I'm very focused on my career and creative pursuits and other things. So um, egg freezing has always been a nice option for me to consider. So if you're thinking about freezing your eggs, what's the first step and what do you need to know? Dr. Jen Ashen weighs in live coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA first look, I'm Zoreen Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. And with the holidays right around the corner, it is the season of giving. But unfortunately, it's also the season of taking. As you're shopping online, scammers are using the names of two big companies to try to rip you off. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz, on three holiday schemes, including one called the Secret Sister Gift Exchange. Order something through Amazon? Scammers are counting on it. As we're shopping online more than ever, scammers are seizing the moment. Listen to this timely robocall. An unauthorized purchase of an iPhone XR 64 gigabytes for $749 is being ordered from your Amazon account. It's not Amazon. The FTC says it's an imposter trying to get your account or credit card number. Holiday shopping on an Apple device? Cons are banking on that, too. The FTC says if you get this call about suspicious activity, be suspicious. Your iCloud account has been breached. Before using any Apple device, please contact the Apple Support Advisor. Press 1 to connect with Apple Support Advisor. Do not press one, do not call the number they provide. Imposter scams like that are rampant. The FTC says last year, people lost more than $600 million because they believed those fake calls. Now another holiday heads up, the Secret Sister Gift Exchange. It starts with an invitation on social media. You can receive up to 36 gifts. All you buy is one. You provide your info and that of a few friends and pass it along. Sounds fun, but the Better Business Bureau warns it's an illegal pyramid scheme. We don't want people to be a Grinch. We just want you to know that uh, it could turn into something very sour very quickly when you're sending gifts to people you really don't know that are part of this list. It's nice to give, but the BBB says this invitation is one to decline. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, well, time now is 447, 43 degrees out there. I can't imagine there's too many people out on the roads. Eh, not too many, but there are a few people, I guess, going to work, right, Nick? That definitely said they're going to work this morning, but things look clear. That accident on I-10, that's now clear. The, the uh, heavy traffic there from I 410 to I-10, that looks good, too. So we look at the screen right now. There's some moderate uh, pockets of traffic, but nothing too bad. A lot of green there on the screen, which is good for this time of morning. Let's go straight to the trans guide. 10 at Crossroads looking good right now. That's where we had that heavy traffic no heavy traffic anymore 1604 at Hosman on the northwest side looks just as good like the way that's looking and we'll do one more here 281 at the quarry yeah north and southbound flowing very smoothly all right so like we said 43 degrees a crisp mm -hmm. start to the Wednesday morning for now for now <laughs> yesterday was gorgeous Justin you're saying we could see could see Record-breaking heat. I, I don't think we'll quite get to the record today, okay. but okay. we'll be in range. So it is kind of interesting. You know, we're in, we're in mid-December now, and uh, temperatures in the 80s yesterday. We're going to be probably right there again today, if not a little bit warmer. 80 was the high in San Antonio, 78 Kerrville, 76 in Fredericksburg, 82 New Braunfels. So it was a warm day all the way around. A lot of sunshine. We're going to see that same setup again today. And right now, we're sitting at 43. Again, big swings in temperature. It is chilly right now. 40 at Stinson, 40 Kelly, 41 Randolph. And we're looking at a light wind generally across the board there. Temperature-wise, 44 Canyon Lake, 43 New Braunfels, 49 Lost Maples, 33 in Tarpley. So just like yesterday, there could be a few spots that get close to freezing, albeit briefly this morning. Uh, we're not expecting widespread freezing temperatures, although we are seeing that in Fredericksburg and junction at this hour. Dew points are low. We've got 20s and 30s out there. Very dry air. Now, the, the one change you'll start to notice tomorrow is an increase in humidity. Not today, but by uh, tomorrow afternoon, I think you'll start to see these dew points really uh, jump up uh, Thursday afternoon. And dew points may go as high as low 60s by Friday morning. 
So that's going to help us out a little bit. Gives us some rain chances, at least some small rain chances uh, as we get in, in, into Friday morning. Still not much going on across the country, but we are watching this area of low pressure. You can see it very nicely here on water vapor, that counterclockwise spin right there. That is our next storm system. It's finally on the move and is going to work its way towards uh, Texas. And that's why uh, we're expecting that rain chance on Friday. So let's look at the models here. And tomorrow, clouds will start to increase probably late in the day. So we'll still see plenty of sun on your Thursday. But a lot more cloud cover on Friday, especially Friday morning. We could start off with some fog and drizzle and then a couple showers too. We're not looking for substantial rain amounts, but your morning commute is probably going to be a little bit damp Friday morning. So keep that in mind. And then uh, by Friday afternoon, things begin to clear. Saturday morning, we start off mostly clear, I think. Saturday will be a little bit cooler. Now, the one change to the forecast, we mentioned this earlier, I do think we're going to see more clouds and maybe a couple of showers on Sunday, and that would really bring temperatures down. And on top of that, we're expecting a front, too. So uh, just know that Sunday is probably going to be a little bit cooler. We may not get out of the 50s there. And when we're talking about rain chances, again, they're not great, but they are there. 30% chance on Friday. 20% chance on Sunday. Forecast for today, up around 70 degrees by 11 a.m., 78 uh, by 1 o'clock, and then we'll be in the low 80s by 3 or 4 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, 76 tomorrow, we'll call it partly cloudy, again, increasing clouds late in the day. 30% chance of some showers Friday morning along with fog and drizzle. Things clear out Friday night, and then 66 Saturday, and then another 20% chance of rain on Sunday and cooler, 58 60 on Monday and Monday morning. We could flirt with freezing temperatures here in San Antonio once again, guys. Okay, right. cool. For now in the 80s. Looks <laughs> yeah. good. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> Nothing like San Antonio in December. Yeah, it's pretty nice to get to change those outfits. I swear it did snow here a couple years ago. It, uh, was it 17? 2017. Yeah, 2017. 2017. Justin and I were snow hunting. Yeah, we're, <laughs> I swear we drove out to the hill country. We're oh, looking that's for right. snow. That's right. It just sounds funny, snow hunting. <laughs> Time now, 451, 43 degrees out. And still ahead, ABC announces some of the performers that will be featured on this year's Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve. Good morning and welcome back. ABC announcing some of the performers for Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve as we get closer to ring in 2021. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Lori Lachlan's daughter, Olivia Jade Giannulli, speaking out for the first time about the college cheating scandal that sent both her parents to prison. Is that there is no justifying or excusing what happened, because what happened was wrong. And I think she appeared on Jada Pinkett Smith's Facebook show, mistake. Red Table Talk, taking so responsibility for her like family's actions. But before the interview, Pinkett Smith's mom, Adrian Banfield Norris, made it clear she wasn't on board with doing the interview in the first place. Her being here is the epitome of white privilege to me. Though by the end, she seemed at least willing to hear Olivia Jade out. Howard Stern will stay on the air until he's at least 71. The satellite radio host signing a new five-year deal with Sirius XM. The former radio shock jock has evolved into someone many consider one of the best interviewers in the business, helping grow Sirius XM from 600,000 subscribers when he started to almost 35 million today. Billy Porter will help spice up New Year's Eve for many, joining ABC's Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve with Ryan Seacrest. Porter, Seacrest, and Lucy Hale will count down the new year in Times Square, but without the usual crowds because of the pandemic. And make her a deal. Shark Tank star Lori Grenier is 51 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now, 4.56, 43 degrees out. And still ahead in our next half hour as we wait for FDA approval for a coronavirus vaccine in the U.S., the number of cases of COVID-19 continue to spike. Plus, Apple showing off their new AirPods Max. It's ridiculous. You're going to have to ask for some, you know, big presents or some big money if you want these under the Christmas tree. We're going to explain why coming up in Tech Bites. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, a local tobacco shop robbed at gunpoint overnight. We have the latest details from police just ahead. Plus, as COVID-19 cases spike to higher levels, the nation awaits FDA approval so a vaccine can be distributed in the U.S. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. All right, we started at 43, already at 44. Good sign for later this <laughs> afternoon. Could we see the 80s? We're going to check in with Justin Horn in just a few moments. Good morning. It is just about 5 o'clock this Wednesday, December 9th. Uh, yep. 
That's right. Getting so, closer to Christmas. <laughs> uh, yeah, just around the corner. I was talking to some friends and family who live in the Northeast, and it started in the 40s yesterday, too. Okay. And I was like, oh, it's so cold out here. And they're like, don't. Don't with us right now. <laughs> and I'm just like, you know what? But did you call them in the afternoon when it hit 80? I didn't want to rub it in. <laughs> so we can actually wear shorts in the afternoon. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah pretty much. You can't, you can't do it this morning. You still need a coat, but this afternoon you can't. This is why we love South Texas. It will get cooler. If you're a fan of colder weather, it, uh, it does move in probably by the weekend. Right now we are sitting at 44 degrees. West northwesterly wind at about 8 miles per hour. So there is a little bit of a wind chill out there. Probably feels like it's in the low 40s, upper 30s, and dew points are still pretty low. Uh, we'll be up around 80 today. That's where we were yesterday. So a rapid warm up with this dry air and uh, it'll be really nice today. Sunny skies. Uh, that's what we're expecting through the afternoon. Right now, 33 in Beauverde. So that's a spot that could get down to freezing yet again this morning. 36 Bernie Stage, 33 Kerrville. Another spot that is right there on the edge. Uh, could see a brief freeze. Uh, 59 degrees by 9 o'clock, 75 noontime, 81 by 3 o'clock. The record today, by the way, is 84. So we're within range. I don't think we'll get uh, record setting numbers today, but warm nonetheless. Some changes, a little cooler this weekend. We're going to talk more about that weekend forecast here in just a bit. But let's get over to Nick now and talk about the traffic. So far, so good, right? So far, so good, Justin. Started off a little rocky there, but now things look good. A lot of green here on the screen. Things look very smooth if you're headed to work right now. Let's just take a look at these drive times here. All right, if you're going 35 southbound from the southwest side of downtown to 1604, you got a 13 minute ride, so that's really good there. 1604 Bandera Road right now on the northwest side looks good, flowing very smoothly east and westbound. I-10 at Crossroads north and southbound look very good uh, going towards 410 and I-10 and 1604 and Hausman looking even better. Max, Steph, back to you. Thanks, Nick. New this morning, police searching for who's responsible for robbing a tobacco shop at gunpoint last night. It happened all on the northeast side. Our Sarah Costa joins us live from her home with what police know about the robbery. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Max and Stephanie. Yeah, police thought that they had the guy who robbed that northeast side tobacco shop at gunpoint, but turns out it was the wrong person. Police say this happened around 930 last night in the 1300 block of Austin Highway, the tobacco house vape and smoke shop. It's across from the Walmart on Austin Highway. Police say a man walked into the store and pointed a gun at the person at the counter and demanded cash. The suspect took the money and ran away. Police at one point had its Eagle helicopter up searching for the man. They thought they had the suspect in the Taco Cabana parking lot nearby the shop. They detained him but it wasn't the man they were searching for. Now, nobody was injured during this incident. And if police say, if you know any information about the suspect responsible for this robbery, you're urged to call to call them. Reporting live from home, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Max and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. By now, we've heard the importance of ventilation and the importance of airflow, especially when it comes to reducing the risk of spreading COVID-19. And rolling down your car windows is an easy way to help out. So Samuel King joins us now and Samuel researchers say there's actually a right way and a wrong way to do this, correct? Yeah, this is pretty interesting. The instinct is, of course, is to roll down the window next to you if you have someone else in the car from outside of your household. But research now from the University of Massachusetts at Amherst finds it's actually the windows farthest from the driver and passenger that may be best. Of course, the safest way is to open all of the windows, but that's not really practical when it's really cold or rainy. So the researchers looked at other combinations and what happens to particles ex exhaled by people in the car. They found the best airflow actually is created by opening the front window on the right side and the rear window on the left side. It creates an air current that crosses through the middle. And surprisingly, the researchers found that that current creates a barrier between the passenger and the driver to keep those particles from spreading inside the vehicle. Now, the biggest implication of these findings is for ride sharing like taxis or Uber or Lyft. But researchers do say that airflow is still no substitute for wearing masks if you're around people outside your home. Max, Stephanie. All right, thank you, Samuel. And as we await a key FDA meeting tomorrow, coronavirus cases now topping 15 million across the U.S. Nearly a third of the nation's hospitals have 80 percent of their ICUs in use. And as we head deeper into the holiday season, fears of that surge upon a surge. ABC's Tom Yamas has more. Health officials in California say the Thanksgiving surge is now hitting their state. A spike in cases and ICU beds filling up. 
We're running out of space, we're running out of supplies, and we have a shortage of providers. Emergency alerts going out to cell phones, urging residents to stay home. Still, in Los Angeles, some restaurants openly defying state orders to shut down in-person dining. We're staying open, man. You know, we've, we've, we've gone past the point of no return. Health officials warning it's just the beginning of the holiday crush. We have not yet seen the full blunt and, and, and the effect of the traveling and the congregating. So much of this tied to what's happening inside of hospitals. States trying to stop the slow motion disasters unfolding inside ICUs across this country. More than 15,000 lives lost in just the last week. The deadliest stretch of the pandemic and so many others fighting to survive. The scariest part of what I see are patients who are at agonizing to breathe. They just cannot breathe. And so they're clawing um, and, and they're just uh, getting agitated because they don't know why they can't breathe. Nine months into this pandemic, the virus is still stalking families all over the U.S. And in Washington state, Amanda Welch hoping her dad can pull through. Her father, Mike, had no underlying conditions, but days after testing positive, he was put on a ventilator. You get a little glimpse of hope and then COVID just rips it from your hands. And I feel like that right there is the worst part. Tom Yamas, ABC News. And here at home, the number of new cases is leading to a new director for Metro Health regarding students and the way they learn. The guidance offers updated recommendations at three risk levels for both public and private schools. Right now, the school risk meter is in the red. So under the updated guidance, in-person learning is not recommended. If offered, Metro Health says it should be highly restricted and schools should consider testing at least 25% of on-campus staff once a week. It also recommends schools that do decide to continue in-person learning should only have fixed pods of up to six students. They say students who are in special education, those who lack access to resources and at-risk students should be prioritized. And according to the Texas Education Agency, schools are only allowed to temporarily switch to remote learning only for things like an outbreak on campus. As an example, Northside ISD has several procedures in place and the district says it does not plan to go back to an all virtual model. Some students have requested to return to the classroom in January. Safety measures as well as state funding are on the minds of a lot of districts in our area. So while the directive offers guidance, it is still up to our local districts to decide how they will run their campuses. Our coronavirus coverage continues online. It includes information on the order to close bars that only sell drinks. That order is expected to take effect tomorrow night. We have all the details on KSET.com as well as the entire updated health directive for schools. And yeah, time now, just about 5.08, 44 degrees out. And still ahead, new details on why state and federal authorities are expected to file antitrust lawsuits against Facebook today. Now, 2020 has been a tough year to say the least. The new survey shows that more people are going out of their way to make sure they stay positive. Just ahead, how people are saying they're coping and what you can do to make 2021 the best year yet. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, a cold 44 degrees for now, but today is kind of a wardrobe change kind of day. You start with a jacket and you can put on some shorts later. We're gonna check in with Justin for your full forecast after the break. Good morning, welcome back and happy Wednesday. As we get closer and closer to the new year, one of the many resolutions is just to be more positive in 2021. Erica Hernandez explains how many Americans are already making the commitment to think about good things and to stay away from the things that bring them down. According to a recent poll published by goodnewsnetwork.org, 8 in 10 Americans say they really want to hear some positive news. Those who participated in the polls say the constant stream of bad news from the coronavirus, the stress from the election, and loss of jobs have taken a toll. The survey of 2,000 Americans also asked people how they are coping with that stress. 43% say they try to make at least one person smile every day. 34% say they try to make someone laugh. Others in the survey say they are dealing with the added stress by going for a walk, calling a friend, or snuggling up with a pet. Another way to feel better is to give back. According to a poll conducted on Giving Tuesday, 6 out of 10 people who had hard times during 2020 said they were led to give more back to the community. 
One of the biggest and most recent examples of that giving was in our No Shave November Challenge, which supports cancer prevention, research, and education. The KSAT team ranked fifth in the country, raising more than $9,700, all thanks to people giving even during a tough year. That kind of generosity can not only help others, psychologists say it can have a profound effect on your outlook on life, despite your recent circumstances. Mental health experts say if you consider these coping mechanisms, your view of the upcoming year can look bright indeed. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. And time now, 513, 44 degrees out. Still ahead, the latest on an antitrust case involving Facebook. And Apple showing off their new over-the-ear headphones, but if you want some, it's going to cost you a pretty penny. We're going to explain next. United Healthcare Medicare plans offer so much more, so you can find just the right plan for you. Like the visit a doctor anywhere our RV takes us plan. The zero copays means more money for rumble lessons plan. And the visit my doctor while eating pancakes plan. United Healthcare is the number one Medicare plan provider, so you're sure to find the right plan for you, including the only plans with the AARP name. Get Medicare with more. Doing what we love can be painful. Introducing Asper Cream with Essential Oil. Now calming lavender oil is combined with fast-acting lidocaine for lasting relief. New Asper Cream with Essential Oil. Experience clean in a whole new way. Now Roomba vacuums exactly where you need it. Hey Google, tell Roomba to vacuum the kitchen counter. And offers personalized cleaning suggestions for a clean unique to you and your home. Roomba and the iRobot Home App. Only from iRobot. Good morning and welcome back. A top cybersecurity firm says it has actually been hacked by a foreign government. ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi has the details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, a leading cybersecurity firm has been hacked. The firm FireEye reported that its own system has been breached and some of its digital tools were stolen. FireEye believes it was a state-sponsored attack. It didn't name a specific country, but some experts are blaming Russia. Facebook is expected to face a wave of lawsuits today. More than 40 state attorneys general and the federal government are uniting against the company. They're filing antitrust lawsuits accusing Facebook of trying to buy or kill off its rivals. Four of the top social media companies are under Facebook's control. Finally, Apple has introduced its new over-the-ear headphones. The AirPod Max has many of the same features as Apple's smaller models. The new headphones cost $550. No word if they work on Walkman. Those are your Tech Bytes. Have a great day. All right, so what do you think, Steph? Are you getting the headphones? I'm not, I know you're so going to get the headphones, right? I, so there are so <laughs> many different reasons why I won't. Mainly the price. Secondly, I don't like the over-the-head thing. Yeah, no, well, not when you're working out, not when you're running. No. That's not going to work. So, you know a big runner and actually like a model of fitness for GMSA? Our Nick Solis. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you? <laughs> I was like, are you? No, talking? Nick runs a lot. He's like doing this Whoa. whole like I, indoor workout thing. I thought well, I was like, oh, my big stomach like, there we go. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, Matt, thank you, Max. I appreciate that. But you are a model of fitness too, my friend. All right, here we go. A lot of green on the screen here. Things are looking good out there right now. No heavy pockets of traffic. Right now is the time to leave for work if you have to head anywhere. All right, outside 10 at Callahan East. That's looking good. 37 at Jones Avenue there on the southeast side. Looking good in that left lane flowing smooth. We have I-10 and West Avenue. Looks great as well. And we'll do one more here. Let's see what we have. Uh, I-10 at Woodlawn. So an exit down. Looking good. All right, thank, thank you. you so much. And, I mean, we can't. Not give credit to our Justin Horn. He can dunk. Yeah. Yes. What? <laughs> Just about... run with it, Justin. We know you're six seven. It's like fine. Fifteen years ago. Uh... No, you're still competitive. <laughs> Man, those layups. I'm good at the layups. I can do that. Uh, Mountain Cedar. It's a question we've got uh, a lot lately. Where is it? Is it showing up in the pollen count? And why do I think like uh, I'm feeling it right now? The latest counts. No Mountain Cedar. We had uh, one count a little bit earlier. Where was it? Twenty. It was a low end. We did talk to the hour just about this. It looks like it, it's just not showing up so far. It doesn't look like there's a lot of pollen on the trees yet. And typically, mountain cedar holds off until the second half of December. The last couple of years, it's, it's shown up early. So that's a little bit of a change this year. It is not in the pollen count yet, but be prepared over the next two to three weeks for it to start showing up. Just a heads up there. Again, it typically peaks. Right around, uh, well, mid-January into February, and then by Valentine's Day, it starts to go away.
So uh, heads up. And the latest pollen counts just mold. It's at 150. That's it. So we've been pretty uh, fortunate with our pollen count as of late. 44 degrees right now. Clear skies. West northwesterly winds at about eight miles per hour. 33 Bull Verde, 43 Canyon Lake, 34 Burning Stage, 35 Comfort. We are down to freezing now in Kerrville, 32 degrees there. Out in Del Rio, 41 for our eastern counties. We're looking at mostly low 40s, maybe a couple of up, up, upper 30s there around LaGrange. Dew point tracker shows that dew points will steadily increase tomorrow. You won't notice it today, but by tomorrow afternoon you will. Humidity jumps up quite a bit, and by Friday morning, there's enough there to get some fog, some drizzle, maybe a couple showers too. And then it falls off sharply on Saturday and basically stays low through the weekend into next week. Uh, the big picture here is still remarkably quiet for fall anyway. We do have some lake effect snow underway across parts of New York and Pennsylvania and the Great Lakes, and then a couple showers out there uh, in the Pacific Northwest. There's a little closer look at some of that snow, pretty heavy in spots. Uh, typically would expect that this time of year. Uh, and then an area of low pressure just off the coast of California. This is the one we've been watching. It's finally on the move and will be headed in our direction. So how does it affect our forecast? Tomorrow you'll notice an increase in moisture. Some cloud cover shows up late in the day. And then by Friday morning, here we go. Some showers uh, on the radar, I think. Nothing that will be terribly heavy. And then we'll get some fog and drizzle too. So that morning commute on Friday will likely be a little bit damp. I think by midday Friday, a lot of this is moving out. And by Friday evening, we're clearing. On Saturday, probably a partly cloudy day. Uh, it'll be a little bit cooler. And then on Sunday, this is the one change we've, we've kind of been looking at here. The model's shifting a little bit in the sense that we're going to get more cloud cover and the possibility of another shower on Sunday with another front. So a reinforcing shot of colder air. So Sunday has the potential to be a little bit chilly and uh, we could see a shower or two around. Today, not so much. It'll be warm in the 80s for highs. In the low 80s by 2, 4, 3, or 2, 3, 4 o'clock, that's when we'll peak with westerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. The extended forecast, 76 Thursday, 74 Friday, with that uh, now 30% chance of rain, and then uh, 66 on Saturday. We'll go 58 now on Sunday with that reinforcing shot of cooler air. Slight chance of a shower there, too, with temperatures in the 60s to start next week guys. I love san antonio in december it's, it's nice. nice to get 80s <laughs> feels jinx. good jinx <laughs> no, it bad. is nice though <laughs> thank you justin 522 44 degrees out and just ahead your morning spotlight a new short oh, film featuring goodness. a un unique take on kfc's colonel sanders quit making me laugh <laughs> plus a classic spider-man villain is returning to the big screen have you, do you plan on watching the movie? Uh, probably not. Yeah, no. I'm not a big Lifetime guy. All right, a big time lottery guy though. Ah. Pick three, eight, seven, two, fireball three, daily four, five, six, one, two, fireball nine. Cash five, 13, 15, 16, 20, 32. And your Mega Millions, 15, 19, 33, 39, 68, Mega Ball 25, Mega Fire three, good luck. Good morning and welcome back. Plenty of movie news today, including the return of a classic Spider-Man villain. Plus, there's a new short film that just might make you hungry. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. I'm trying to save the one person left in my life that matters to me. Forget COVID-19, Songbird moves us ahead four years as COVID-23 is ravaging the planet. KJ Appa and Sophia Carson star along with Bradley Whitford and Demi Moore. Songbird, written and shot during the current pandemic, debuts on premium VOD Friday. We could rebuild, enlarge the containment field, make it bigger and stronger than ever. Dr. Octopus is back. According to multiple media reports, Alfred Molina is set to return as Doc Ock in the next Spider-Man movie. Molina played the eight-limbed villain in 2004's Spider-Man 2. The latest Spidey flick is due in theaters next December. Who the hell are you? Harlan Sanders, the new chef. And in case you missed it, this is real. Mario Lopez plays a young Colonel Sanders in the Lifetime mini-movie, A Recipe for Seduction. Presented, of course, by Kentucky Fried Chicken. Again, this is a real short film airing amid Lifetime's blizzard of Christmas movies, Sunday at noon Eastern and Pacific. Ordering takeout in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. I got a lot of comments here. Um, first and foremost, great name for the movie. They're playing the music, so they want me to stop talking about it. <laughs> Will you see it? No, probably not. Well, I, you know what? I, I don't know. Maybe I'll see 
you know, what I people like, are talking about. I like how they do had to distinguish if this is a real movie. It doesn't look real. I, I still don't believe it. A heck of an advertisement. All right, 527, 44 degrees out. And still ahead in our next half hour, why lawmakers in Washington are giving the go-ahead to a major military spending bill despite a veto threat from President Donald Trump. Plus, do you need more Krispy Kreme donuts in your life? Do you? Eh, not right now. Justin shaking his head, yes. <laughs> We're going to tell you about a special deal coming up this Saturday. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Wednesday, 5.30 this Wednesday morning. A crispy start to the morning, but did you make it outside yesterday? I did. So thanks for joining us. It was a beautiful afternoon yesterday, and I guess we're expecting some 80s today as well. Justin, give us the lowdown. Yeah, I like that adjective crispy. It's a crispy <laughs> morning. Uh, we, we're we're going to see some near record warmth today. Yesterday we got up to 80. Today, probably right there again, maybe a little bit warmer. The record for today is 84. So I don't think we'll get to the record, but it is uh, notable that uh, it is quite warm, well above average. There are some rain chances as we get into Friday morning, some fog, some drizzle, and then a frontal boundary will be moving through. That'll give us some chances for rain. And then we're also expecting uh, another front with some colder conditions on Sunday with potentially a shower as well. So a lot to look at in the seven day forecast. In the meantime, it is chilly out there. 33 degrees, Boulevardi, 43 Rio, Rio Medina, 37 in Hondo, 39 Stinson, and 44 officially at the airport. Uh, there is a little bit of a windshield too. She so head off to school this morning, grab the jacket. Uh, temperatures, um, maybe not that cold, low 40s, but we'll be up in the uh, 80s this afternoon. Uh, upper 70s, low 80s by the afternoon hours. So uh, a warm day for sure. Uh, we'll talk about some of those changes and what the weekend brings for us coming up here in just a few minutes. Let's get over to Nick now with a look at your time saver traffic. Thanks, Justin. Right now on the city, things look good inside the loops. Everything's great. A lot of green on the screen there. Let's just take a look at some drive time, shall we? Here we go. 151 eastbound from 1604 to 90, nine minutes. And if you're 90 eastbound from 1604 to I-35, 11 minutes. Looking good there. Taking a look out Trans Guy, 10 at West Avenue. Still flowing smooth. 10 at Woodlawn and exit up there. Looks great as well, and uh, let's see what else we have. I-10 at Days of Vala. So if you're down I-10 going east to west, it looks good. Max. Thank you, Nick. We're going to start this half hour from D.C. A bipartisan rebuke to President Donald Trump from the House of Representatives. Despite a threat of a presidential veto, the House approves a spending bill by an overwhelming majority. CNN's John Lawrence reports. The 2020 National Defense Authorization Act passes the House of Representatives by a large margin. On this vote, the yeas are 335, the nays are 78, with one present. The conference report is adopted without objection. The motion reconsidered is laid on the table. The $740 billion bill includes raises for U.S. soldiers and equipment updates. Our men and women in uniform put their lives on the line to defend our freedom. We owe them the tools to do their job. President Donald Trump is threatening to veto the bill because it doesn't repeal a law that protects Internet companies from being liable for what's posted on their sites. It also renames military bases with Confederate names and limits the amount of money the president can move for border wall funding. There are real grave concerns here and the president stands by that. Some, like Republican Senator Lindsey Graham, support the president's stance. Others hope Trump will back down from his threat. Well, I don't think there's a bill uh, that uh, can't have a significant number of one of us say, I wish that provision were different. Uh, but we ought to not have our focus on uh, the donut hole. We ought to have our focus on the donut. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Well, SpaceX was forced to abort a test launch Tuesday for its Starship rocket. The attempt was made at SpaceX's Boca Chica location. That's near Padre Island. It was the first high altitude launch attempt for Starship SN8. It's being developed to take people and cargo to the moon and beyond. But get this, less than two seconds before liftoff, the rocket detected something being called abnormal with one or more of the engines. It automatically shut down. No word yet on when SpaceX will make in another attempt. Boeing is delivering a 737 MAX to United Airlines nearly two years since the planes were grounded. It's the first 737 delivery for Boeing since it was forced to ground the plane after two air disasters killed 
346 crew members and passengers, but the FAA approved it last month to fly again. Boeing is sitting on about 450 MAX jets it has built since March of 2019. The company has said it expects to deliver only half of those planes by the end of 2021. American Airlines plans to be the first airline to return flying passengers on the MAX starting December 29th with flights between Miami and New York. Well, back here at home, a series of closures set to start this morning on a single stretch of road. Our Samuel King joins us now with more on what you can expect as far as road closures. Hey, good morning, Samuel. Oh, good morning, Stephanie and Max. Today, Martin Luther King Drive from Badger Street to West Hind Street will be closed from 7 this morning till 6 this evening. Another two sections will be closed tomorrow, and the final two closures are set to happen on Friday. Now, the city's Public Works Department mentioned a closure would wrap up after some, quote, Video production has been completed, and the Public Affairs Department confirmed it's for next year's Martin Luther King Jr. March. You may be wondering why. Well, because of the pandemic, the celebration in January will be virtual. Of course, that's going to be a big change because San Antonio is billed as holding the largest MLK March in the nation. Max, Stephanie? All right, thank you so much, Samuel. Time now, 535, 44 degrees out. And still ahead, we have scam alert for people who have Apple or Amazon accounts, how scammers are trying to get a hold of your money this holiday season. And coming up next, the latest on how the Army is reacting to the murder of Army Specialist Vanessa Guillen and other soldiers' deaths. And taking a look outside with live cam, a nice cold 44 degrees. Enjoy that jacket this morning. You will lose it by this afternoon. We're expecting to go up to 80 again. We'll have uh, more details with Justin after the break. Good morning and welcome back. The Army now punishing a number of its leaders at Fort Hood. This after a probe was initiated after the murder of a soldier and several others at the base. CNN's Camila Bernal explains why these Army leaders were suspended. The Army announcing that 14 senior officers at its Fort Hood base will be punished. I directed the relief and or suspension of commanders and other leaders from the Corps to the squad level. This is the result of a major independent review of the base, but the probe was initiated after the murder of Vanessa Guillen. And now the family says this is a step forward. We don't need this to happen again and um, we're so I guess you could say satisfied with what the investigation did release today. Guijin disappeared in April, but her remains were discovered in late June. It was later found that she'd been bludgeoned to death with a hammer. The main suspect killed himself. The initial investigation into Vanessa's death, coupled with high numbers of crimes and deaths at Fort Hood, has revealed a series of missteps and multiple failures in our system and within our leadership. Next, they say, is Washington, D.C., where they're hoping Congress will pass a bill to change how sexual assault and harassment claims are reported and handled in the military. Wherever you are, Vanessa, you are alive. You are here today. You, your legacy is going to keep going, hopefully with the act that uh, we're trying to pass. And you know that as sisters, we're going to fight for you. I'm Camila Bernal reporting. Time now is 540, 44 degrees out. And coming up next, more details on a new line of stores featured at KSET.com that examines issues going on the city's south side. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Wednesday. Our Unheard series returns this week. We want to introduce you to a new collaborator on KSET.com. April Monterosa is the creator of a magazine that's all about the South Side, and here's her story. I was born and raised on the South Side of San Antonio. I come from a blue collar, middle class family. Uh, they're business owners as well. And I actually bought the house I grew up in, so I still live on the South Side of San Antonio. It's home. I, I mean, even in your neighborhood, it feels like, like family. It's just been, um, it's just been a crazy journey to get here. Now that it's really happening, the response is just something that I never thought would happen. It's that I really hope that my magazine connects my community personally and professionally and, and keeps our small businesses thriving. Uh, I do have a team of contributing writers and the majority of them are from the South Side as well. The magazine is about 60 pages each issue. 
So there's a combination of personable stories, Southside culture, food. Uh, I have somebody doing a column of sweets and, and treats on the South Side. So it's a combination of different things. I hope that they see how full of culture we are, how our sense of family and unity is just so tight knit. And I hope that they come and see all of our hidden gems here. Cause we do have a lot of pretty spots on the South Side to visit. And live from the South Side, stories will start popping up on KSAT.com this coming month. You can read more about April and the magazine now on KSAT.com. I love that we're doing this. Yes, it's pretty cool to hear the stories. In your morning consumer headlines, the Federal Trade Commission is warning consumers about a new scam using two of the biggest names in tech. Scammers are robocalling consumers to say that there's a problem with either their Apple or Amazon accounts. For Apple customers, the robocalls are saying their iCloud account has been breached. In the case of Amazon, the call may be about a lost package or an order they can't fulfill. In both cases, it is a means to rip off your credit card numbers or sensitive personal data. The FTC says you should not respond to these robocalls. Instead, hang up right away. If you think there is a problem with your Apple or Amazon account, reach out using a phone number or through a website that you know to be real. All right, if you're like our Justin Horn and you love Krispy Kreme donuts, listen up. Krispy Kreme bringing back its Day of the Dozens deal this Saturday on 12-12, also known as December 12th. Donut lovers who buy a dozen glazed donuts can get another dozen for only a dollar. Krispy Kreme's holiday donuts are included in the deal, but each customer is only allowed to use the deal twice. And remember, check your local shop, make sure that it is participating in the special day of the dozens. And a new survey, okay, it's according to the new survey, not me, by AAA <laughs> reports that men are more aggressive drivers compared to women. According to the Motor Club, men are more likely to speed, tailgate, merge dangerously, and honk at other drivers Our more Nick than Solis women. Just smiled. <laughs> the new survey finds that women admit to some dangerous driving habits of their own, including running red lights. Younger drivers of both sexes tend to be more aggressive than older drivers. And in this holiday season, AAA encourages everyone to be more tolerant and more forgiving. All right, we want to tell you about two Aww. pets who need forever homes over at the San Antonio Humane Society. The Adrian, here he is, Aww. adorable, energetic, big boy who would love to have a home where he can run around <laughs> and slobber all over you. He is a four-year-old terrier American pit bull mix who was transferred from Louisiana ahead of Hurricane Laura, and he would do best as the only pup in the household. And next up, we have Cody, smart, silly, and happy hound, terrier American pit bull mix would love to find his forever home as well. He's been at the shelter for more than 100 days, has shown everyone lots of affection, fun, fun hangout sessions, a big puppy that is ready to play. All Cody wants for Christmas is a loving home. Uh, if you like Cody or Adrian, for more information, just head to sahumane.org. They're located at 4804 Fredericksburg Road. You can call 210-226-7461 for any more info. Yeah, very photogenic pets. They look like they should be on a calendar. Yeah. Very cute. So cute. All right, so we talked about aggressive driving and that uh, that <laughs> survey. Our Nick Solis had some smiles. <laughs> Nick, how's the look out there right now? Oh, it looks good right now, Max. Things look great out here. A lot of green on the screen now. Traffic's going to pick up as normal here around 6 a.m., but right now things still look very smooth out there. Let's go straight to Transguide. You got 151 and 410 looking good. I-10 East and Loop 410. That looks great. Um, this looks like it's going to be on the northwest side. You got 35 and Loop 410 on the northeast side looking wonderful. And 604 in Bandera Northwest looks great as well. Just remember, control your speed, two hands on the steering wheel, and wear that seatbelt. And no aggressive driving. No aggressive driving, please. <laughs> All right, so we also talked about donuts, and we know Justin Horn got a little excited. Are you going to partake in the, uh, what is the day of donuts? Of Krispy Kreme. <laughs> well, I do like donuts and I do like deals, so it sounds like uh, it's right up my well, alley. Saturday's your day. Yeah, I'll probably make that happen. Uh, maybe you're working from your porch today. Yesterday was a great day. Today will be another great day for it. Uh, temperatures will start off a little chilly this morning, but I'd say by mid morning, go right out on the porch, start working. Temperatures up around 81 for a high, and they'll eventually fall into the 70s by 6 o'clock, 64 by 8 o'clock, by 10 o'clock. We're back in the 50s. Tomorrow should be another pretty good day, too, although we'll start seeing an increase in cloud cover. Again, it is so quiet across the country. Every time I see this, it, it is just incredible to me that we are in December and there's no real big storm systems out there. We do have some snow up across the northeast, 
But other than that, the rest of the country is incredibly quiet. We are keeping our eye on this spin, which is just off the California and Mexico coast here. We can see it very nicely on water vapor. This is our next storm system. It's been sitting out there for a couple days. It's finally getting a kick towards Texas. And as it arrives, it will help to bring us uh, some rain chances, some small rain chances uh, into Friday. Right now, 44 degrees at the airport, but uh, quite a bit colder at Stenson, 39, 39 at Kelly, and then 41 at Randolph. We've got light winds. Uh, at least those last two sites at the airport, a little bit of a breeze there, so there could be a wind chill in some spots. 36 comfort. We are down to freezing Kerrville, 32, 43 New Braunfels, the 41 down there in Pleasanton with clear skies and uh, 41 out in Del Rio. Uh, looking at the wind chill, it is down to 40 here in town. There are a few spots where wind chills are in the 30s this morning. So uh, just like yesterday, start with a jacket and you can lose it during the afternoon. Uh, dew points are low. What you'll notice though, as we get into tomorrow, dew points will start to rise. I think that probably starts to happen about midday tomorrow, and then dew points will, uh, by the evening hours, will start to rise into the 50s and 60s. So it, it gets to the point where maybe you can feel the humidity a little bit, and that is what's going to set the stage for our rain chances. So let's look at the computer models here, and this is tomorrow at 5 o'clock. That increase in humidity will result in some increase in cloud cover late in the day. And then by Friday morning, 7 o'clock, here we are. Some showers out there, some fog, maybe some drizzle too. So it's going to be a little damp for your Friday morning commute. I think by Friday midday, this is moving out. And uh, we'll see partly cloudy skies on Saturday. And then by Sunday, another funnel boundary. And this may allow for some showers to develop. Not looking for anything heavy. I think they'll be few and far between. Uh, but at least some cloud cover, if anything else. And that's going to keep temperatures pretty chilly on Sunday. So just a heads up, we've lowered the temperatures quite a bit for high temperatures on Sunday. As far as rain chances go, 30% chance Friday, 20% chance, uh, chance on Sunday. Those are our two shots there. And either way, I don't think we're looking at substantial rain. Rest of today, uh, 64 by 10 o'clock, 75 noontime already, and then up to the low 80s this afternoon with sunny skies tomorrow. We'll call it partly cloudy, although we'll start off sunny. Clouds will be increasing late in the day and then 30% chance Friday with some morning fog and drizzle. Partly cloudy Saturday, 66, but 58 on Sunday with a 20% chance of rain. And then pretty chilly to start uh, next week with maybe some temperatures near freezing Monday morning. Guys. All right, 81 and sunny. Can't complain there. Very nice, very nice afternoon. Time now, 551, 44 degrees out. And still ahead is Mount Everest having growing pains mm. while the world's tallest mountain may be getting taller. Time to take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, seven, two, fireball three, daily four, five, six, one, two, fireball nine. Cash five, 13, 15, 16, 20, 32. And your mega millions, 15, 19, 33, 39, 68. Mega ball 25, mega plier three. Good luck. This just in, Earth's tallest mountain is now even taller, uh, statistically speaking. Experts have decided Mount Everest measures in at roughly 29,032 feet tall. That is about three feet taller than previously thought. I know it doesn't sound like much, but the figure caps off more than a decade of dispute over the peak's precise height. A back and forth dispute between the governments of Nepal and China started in 2005 with neither wanting to recognize the other's findings. And in 2015, a massive earthquake threatened to change the data altogether. Finally, in 2019, the countries agreed to work together, teams went up, and a jointly calculated measurement was announced, with leaders calling Everest an eternal symbol of the friendship between the two countries. Hey look, yay, another mysterious monolith has been discovered. This time on a beach in the UK, the monolith... <laughs> you know what? Enough with the monoliths. I'm sick of the monoliths. Surely there's more important news out there, like, uh, aha! Otters in love. A pair of lonely sea otters who had lost their mates found new love thanks to dedicated animal experts and, I swear I'm not making this up, an otter dating website. Okay, the dating profile site Fishing for Love was crafted specifically to pair up Pumpkin and Harris, but it worked, and the two were brought together at an England sanctuary and hit it off. Don't think this is adorable? Well, you otter. Uh, whatever, it's better than monoliths. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. And a big KSAC community update. 
You help beat the goal for the annual Share the Shoes Drive. 2,070 pairs of shoes collected for children in need here in our community. That's nearly 1,000 more pairs than our goal. KSAC Community, the San Antonio Police Department, and the local nonprofit Zapatos were very helpful, as well as several other agencies. So we want to say thank you to Ansira and Shoe Carnival for also stepping in, stepping up, and helping out. Thank you to all the viewers who have helped donate, especially in these tough times. All right, coming up today on GMSA at 9 a.m., are you dreaming of a white Christmas? Well, we may not get any snow here in San Antonio, but that doesn't mean we can't create our own snow. Katie Blake teaching us how to make snowflakes. Fake snow, well, either way, still. For this experiment, you're gonna need baking soda, shaving cream, water, a bowl, some utensils, mix it all up. Don't miss Katie's Science Lab, 9 a.m. right after GMA. And we have so much more coming up in our next half hour, including, have you ever wondered how much moon rocks are worth? Just ahead on Good Morning San Antonio, why some companies are trying to cash in and why NASA is also getting involved. And before we head to break, quick look at the roadways. Everything looks pretty clear out there right now. Last time we checked in with Nick, he said it was all green on the screen. We're gonna check back in with him right after the break. Metro Health is urging parents to keep their kids enrolled in remote learning because of a new surge of coronavirus cases. It comes as the school risk level was moved up to high. And a man in critical condition after an argument led to gunfire. But right now, BCSO tells us they can't find who's responsible. And taking a look outside with the live cam, we're at a cold 42 degrees. It actually dropped a couple of degrees, but we're expecting warmer temperatures later in the day. We're going to take, check in with Justin in just a bit. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is Wednesday, December 9th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a great afternoon yesterday, and it looks like we're going to get nice weather today as well. Thank you, Justin. Oh, <laughs> it's me now. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, yesterday was, was gorgeous. We had temperatures uh, in, in the low 80s. We're going to be there again today. So basically a repeat, maybe even a little bit warmer, close to some records, not quite there, but uh, the record for today is 84. There was yesterday's high 80, probably go about 81 today. A lot of 70s on the map yesterday too. New Braunfels got up to 82. It was toasty for sure. But right now, chilly. We're, Seeing those big swings in temperature, 42 at the airport, 38 Hello, just 42 Rio Medina, 32 right now, Tarpley 31 in Kerrville. So there are a couple of spots below freezing. We've seen that last couple of mornings. Here's what our forecast looks like today, 59, 9 o'clock, 75 noontime, sunny skies again today. And there's that high temperature up around 81. Westerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. A couple nice days. We've got some rain chances mixed in there too. And we've got a lot of questions about mountain cedar. We're going to answer some of those coming up here in just a little bit. Uh, but we've got to check in on traffic now and still seeing a lot of green. Two thumbs up. Like yeah, <laughs> you see that with the camera. Yeah, <laughs> Justin, things still look good out here. Uh, no heavy pockets of traffic except here. It's going to be eastbound uh, or it looks like Rigsby. So, yeah, Rigsby right here. Um, well, you know, I'm sorry, it's I-10. Eastbound I-10, before, right before Rigsby, we got some traffic build up there, the usual traffic build up, but just keep that in mind if you're heading in that direction. But let's take a look at some drive times. I-10 eastbound on the northwest side from FM 46, that's near Bernie, all the way to 1604 is 24 minutes, not a bad time. And if you're I-10 eastbound from the northwest side of 1604 to downtown, you got a 13 minute ride, so looking good there as well. Taking a look outside at the Trans Guide 10 at Woodlawn, still flowing smoothly, traffic not picking up too much, it's looking good, and 281 and bitters looking great as well. Steph? Thank you, Nick. New this morning, a man is in critical condition after a shooting in East Bear County. Bear County Sheriff's deputies say it happened around 11 last night off of Loop 1604 near Highway 87. Now, deputies say a man was visiting someone's house when an argument broke out. They say someone then pulled out a gun and shot the man in the chest. Deputies say they have several witnesses in custody and are working to find a suspect. The man was rushed to Bamsey, and again, he is in critical condition. And San Antonio police looking for an armed robber on the northeast side. Police say it all happened around 9.30 last night at the Chapala Tobacco Shop just off Austin Highway near Van Diver. They say a man walked in, robbed the store with a handgun, then ran off. The police still trying to find out who is responsible. And police need the community's help finding the person responsible for shooting and killing a 21-year-old woman. This happened back in December of 2017. Our Sarah Costa joins us live from her home with what police know about this unsolved case. Good morning, Sarah. 
Good morning, Stephanie. You know, police have a surveillance photo. They have a story from a witness, but they still need the community's help in finding who is responsible for this murder of this 21-year-old woman. Just take a look at your screen. This is the surveillance photo that police have. Police say identifying the photo of that dark sedan with tinted windows and body damage the right rear passenger door. Police say the shooter was in that vehicle the night of December 2nd, 2017, that pulled up next to the vehicle that 21-year-old Detranique Hawkins was in. Police reports say that it happened around 11 p.m. that night, and Hawkins was in the passenger seat of that car that was in the area of Foster Road and FM 78 when the dark sedan pulled up and the suspect fired multiple shots into the victim's car. One of the shots struck Hawkins and killed her. If you know any information about this incident, you are urged to call the Crime Stoppers hotline number. That is 224-STOP. Remember, if your information leads uh, police to arrest somebody, you may be eligible up to $5,000. Live from home, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Max Thank you, Sarah. Sarah, many areas across the country have travel restrictions due to the coronavirus pandemic that require either negative tests or quarantine. Airlines have actually offered some pre-flight testing for international passengers. Our Samuel King joins us now. So Samuel, how is this expanding domestically? Well, Max, beginning today, American Airlines is the first carrier to make at-home rapid tests available for all U.S. destinations with travel restrictions. That includes places like Chicago, New York, and Washington, D.C. Now, it previously offered testing for destinations in Latin America, the Caribbean, and Hawaii. Now, here's how it works. You can order your kit ahead of the flight on the American Airlines website. It's actually a partner that does the testing. The airline recommends you order it at least five days before departure, and you take the test and send back the sample. You should have the results in within 48 hours, but that also means you should look at other testing options if you're leaving within 48 hours. Now, American testing is be available for flights beginning on Saturday, so you order it today so you can fly Saturday. Some states still require you to quarantine for a short period of time, even with a negative test, so check the restrictions at your destination if you must travel. Other airlines have rolled out rapid testing or at least pilot programs, including United and Hawaiian Airlines, which will actually begin flying out of Austin in the spring. And we should mention the test for American Airlines program will cost about $129. Max and Stephanie. Thank you, Samuel. Well, speaking of the coronavirus, cases continuing to surge here in San Antonio. Local health officials reporting 1,294 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County. Metro Health says nine more people have died from the virus in our community. Mayor Ron Nuremberg says the seven-day moving average of cases now above 1,100 new cases every day. He says the positivity rate still above 15% as well. Meanwhile, Metro Health's medical director says the school risk level is now high. Dr. Wu says Metro Health amended a directive advising against in-person learning for most students, with a few exceptions. Metro Health says if schools must keep students in the classroom, they should be highly restricted and should test at least 25 percent of on-campus staff once a week. Now, so far, Northside ISD saying they do not plan on returning to an all-virtual model. And if you have questions about the remainder of the school year amid a pandemic, KSET wants to help. We will have our second in a series of live streams in partnership with Trinity University. Join us tonight to hear conversations with students and teachers on learning in a pandemic. It starts on air at 630 and will continue online at KSET.com at 7 tonight. A new survey finds that income in nearly half of the United States households taking a hit during this pandemic and it is not recovered. Bankrate.com says 42% of people surveyed said their income is still below pre-pandemic levels. Most income decline came from shutdowns, layoffs, pay cuts, or reduced hours. In your morning headlines, President-elect Joe Biden continues to round out his cabinet. He is expected to nominate Ohio Representative Marsha Fudge as Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. She would be the second African-American woman in his cabinet. Now, Biden has been reluctant to pick many Democratic members of Congress, given their narrow margin in the House and uncertainty in the Senate. But Marsha Fudge represents a safely Democratic seat and was deemed an exception. And the House of Representatives passing this year's annual National Defense Authorization Act with bipartisan support. The measure gives soldiers pay raises, modernizes military equipment, and requires more scrutiny before forces withdraw from Germany or Afghanistan. The president 
threatened to veto the bill because the measure does not repeal a law that shields internet companies from being liable for some content posted on their sites. But the bill passed with a veto-proof majority in the House. Next step, Senate for approval. A new report says the Arctic is warmer, less icy, and greener than it was just 15 years ago. The National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration said so in its annual Arctic report card. It documented near record high surface temperatures and found sea ice at near record lows. Scientists say the annual report card is important because the Arctic is a bellwether for the global climate. Time now is 6.09, 42 degrees out. The Cowboys are seeing Whoa. their playoff hopes slip before their eyes. We're going to have a response from last night's loss in Baltimore. How strong were those hopes in the first place? All right, a new very survey strong, shows Max, very. more people <laughs> are going out of their way to make sure they stay positive this year. After the break, how people say they're coping with 2020 and what you can do to make 2020 the best year yet. The bar set real low for 2021. Well, I was going to say with Cowboys fans, it's always set high. Statement we, it stands. We're, the no. bar sets real low. <laughs> we're hopeful, <laughs> just disappointed. Taking a look outside with live cam, a cold 42 degrees for now. We're going to check in with Justin after the break. According to a recent poll published by goodnewsnetwork.org, 8 in 10 Americans say they really want to hear some positive news. Those who participated in the polls say the constant stream of bad news from the coronavirus, the stress from the election, and loss of jobs have taken a toll. The survey of 2,000 Americans also asked people how they are coping with that stress. 43% say they try to make at least one person smile every day. 34% say they try to make someone laugh. Others in the survey say they are dealing with the added stress by going for a walk, calling a friend, or snuggling up with a pet. Another way to feel better is to give back. According to a poll conducted on Giving Tuesday, 6 out of 10 people who had hard times during 2020 said they were led to give more back to the community. One of the biggest and most recent examples of that giving was in our No Shave November Challenge, which supports cancer prevention, research, and education. The KSAT team ranked fifth in the country, raising more than $9,700, all thanks to people giving even during a tough year. That kind of generosity can not only help others, psychologists say it can have a profound effect on your outlook on life, despite your recent circumstances. Mental health experts say if you consider these coping mechanisms, your view of the upcoming year can look bright indeed. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Great story. Uh, my only gripe with it is mm -hmm. she used pictures from No Shave November and she didn't use me. I know. She forgot about Max. She didn't have me. She didn't have Justin. She didn't have Nick Solis. She just had Mike and I think Stephen. Yes, yeah, Stephen yeah. Cavazos was in there. Speaking of Nick. Yeah. Checking how, in with how, him right how now. How do you feel about that? Mosey on over. <laughs> You know, it's okay, Eric. It's all good. My beard wasn't that good anyways. It was fantastic. <laughs> Top tier facial hair, Nick. You had a great beard. <laughs> Thank you, Steph. Okay, dealing with one accident right now. Right, everything looks good for the most part if you head, if you head out to work. But we do have one accident here. It's going to be southbound IH-37 right at Southeast Military here. Now, um, this accident doesn't look to be causing too much traffic yet. Just came out. Keep you updated on it when I can, but just keep that in mind if you're heading in this direction. Taking a look outside at the Trans Guide right now, we got I-10 at Pro Band. That's a new one. That's looking good there, flowing smoothly north and south. 10 at Callahan always looks good uh, this time of day. And uh, 37 at Jones on the southeast side. Doesn't look like that accident's affecting traffic too much there on those southbound lanes yet. All right, overall not too bad. And kids going to school definitely need the jacket, at least in the morning, right? Yeah, you, you'll need it this morning, next couple of mornings. Uh, but by the afternoon, it's it's almost short and short sleeve weather, uh, the way things are working out. Yeah, 80s. Almost. I'd say it's almost shorts weather. Pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, it, it is for sure. And we've got a lot of questions lately about mountain cedar. Where is it? Is it coming into the pollen count? And why hasn't it shown up yet? It, it did show up one day. We had a low count of 20. But other than that, we haven't seen a whole lot of it. We did talk to the hour just about this. Looks like the season's starting a little bit later this year. Last couple of years, it started early. Things typically, if you're looking at the averages, don't really start to pick up until uh, about the week of Christmas. So that's when we would expect things to really start uh, jumping up. But so far, it has been very quiet in the mountain cedar cap. There's not a lot of pollen on the trees, so it looks like. And maybe... Uh, the drought has something to do with that, so weather does play a role here. But just heads up, it, it wasn't in yesterday's count. We don't think it'll be in today's count. We'll certainly keep you posted. If you're going for a run this morning, 
it's perfect. Uh, you really can't beat this weather. Uh, it's good all, all across the board, all the way through uh, the lunch hour. It may get a little warm this afternoon if, uh, if uh, you don't like to say 80s. It, you may start to sweat a little bit, but other than that, looks pretty good. 42 degrees at the airport right now. Northwesterly winds around 5 miles per hour. That is producing just a little bit of a wind chill. 33 in Boulevardy, 43 in New Braunfels, 3700, 34 Bandera. Kerrville, you are just below freezing at 31. 42 Catula, 40 Kennedy, 39 in Gonzales and you look at the wind chills yeah, there are some in the 30s it feels like it's 39 here in San Antonio so that definitely justifies the coat this morning dew point tracker shows we've got very dry air now it will start to the dew point will start to climb tomorrow probably late in the day you'll start to notice a little bit more humidity and by Friday morning there is enough there to generate not only some fog and some drizzle but I think some showers too so it'll be a little bit wet to start Friday morning here's the setup we've got a trough out east it's not doing much. There is some snow up across uh, the northeast and then sort of a trough in the west here that is keeping things very quiet and dry with an area of low pressure here cut off from the jet stream down there across parts of uh, the Pacific, moving a little bit closer to Mexico and California. This is the one we're going to watch. It will bring some energy towards Texas. That will start the process of uh, bringing some clouds in tomorrow with that increased humidity. And then by Friday, look at that, there is some rain potentially on the radar. So a few showers, not substantial rain, but a few showers Friday morning, along with that fog and drizzle, likely will be a wet commute to start the day. By midday, though, a lot of the rain clouds move east. We should see some clearing. Saturday at this point looks OK. It'll be a little bit cooler. Mid 60s with partly cloudy skies. And then by Sunday, this is a little bit of a change. We are expecting increasing clouds. Some slight chances for rain as another front works in here. I think it'll be substantially cooler on Sunday. So just a heads up for the second half of the weekend. Temperatures today up around 81 degrees. Clear skies across the board there. Westerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then 76 Thursday, 74 Friday. Right now we have it at a 30% chance of rain. So we've upped that just a little bit. 66 Saturday and then a 20% chance of rain. Mostly cloudy and cooler on Sunday with a high of only 58. Guys. Very nice. No complaints for me, Justin. Yep, no, no complaints at all. <laughs> 619, 42 degrees out. And the pandemic is causing some people to seek different paths to parenthood. In today's GMA First Look, we're going to take a look at what fertility doctors are calling an egg freezing boom. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Does your vitamin C last 24 hours? Only Nature's Bounty does. New Immune 24 Hour Plus has longer lasting vitamin C plus herbal and other immune superstars. Only from Nature's Bounty. Our essential mist transforms fragrance infused with natural essential oils to create a mist. To invite the scents, comfort, and warmth of the season into your home. It's air care redefined. Connect to nature this holiday season. Is skincare from around the world better than Olay? Olay Regenerous faced 131 premium products from 12 countries over 10 years. Olay's hydration was unbeaten every time. Face anything. Find out more at Olay.com. Hi, this is Margaret, your Dell Technologies Advisor. To listen is to hear more than what's being said and offer the answers that make someone feel truly heard. I understand. Let's get started. Call a Dell Technologies Advisor today. In this morning's GMA first look, is the pandemic causing an egg freezing boom? I think also that, you know, people are realizing there's many paths to parenthood. And that's kind of aligned now with this pandemic that people are not being forced, but potentially pushed more to pursuing kind of alternative parenthoods. 31 year old Allison Stuckless making the decision to freeze her eggs in September. She says she made the choice once the pandemic hit and was able to take the time needed for the process. I do want a family, um, just not right now. I'm very focused on my career and creative pursuits and other things. So um, egg freezing has always been a nice option for me to consider. So if you're thinking about freezing your eggs, what's the first step and what do you need to know? Dr. Jen Ashen weighs in live coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA first look, I'm Zoreen Shah.
ABC News Los Angeles. A leading cybersecurity company has been hacked. The firm FireEye reported that its own system has been breached and some of its digital tools were stolen. FireEye believes it was a state-sponsored attack. It didn't name a specific country, but some experts are blaming Russia. The company says the tools stolen could mount new cyber attacks around the world. Facebook is expected to face a wave of lawsuits today. More than 40 state attorneys general and the federal government are uniting against the company. They're filing antitrust lawsuits accusing Facebook of trying to buy or kill off its rivals. Four of the top social media companies are under Facebook's control, including Instagram and WhatsApp. Pro Football Government, powered by Davis Law Firm. Good morning and welcome back. Not that good of a morning if you're a Cowboys fan. If you are, in fact, a Cowboys fan, you might want to look away. Last night's game, much like this whole season, really getting away from Cowboys very quickly. Baltimore Ravens using home field advantage to run right over the boys, literally. Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson only had to throw 17 passes in the game, but that's because the entire Baltimore team tallied nearly 300 yards on the ground during the game. Meanwhile, Cowboys could not hold on to the ball. Missed two field goals early on, helped the game swip, slip away. The Ravens, fun fact, do have former Cowboy Des Bryant. He didn't even play because he tested positive for COVID-19 right before kickoff. The Dallas defense just couldn't hold up, couldn't stay up there on the field. Ravens win big 34-17, and it looks like the Cowboys are now a long shot to make the playoffs. We got to get uh, more sense of urgency. We got um, we to turn it up. We're running out of time. Uh, Four games left. Um, we gotta, we gotta go figure out how to get some wins. All we have to worry about is us. Just this control we control and and see how this whole thing shakes out. There you go. Our Nick Solis has his own pro opinion. <laughs> Cowboys now have a short week to prepare for the next week, next game. That's fortunately against a team with a worse record than them, taking on the Bengals, who lost their starting quarterback for the season, the number one pick, Joe Burrow. And kickoff schedule for noon in Ohio. So let's see if the Cowboys can write the ship. Uh, hoping it's a prettier game yeah. this time around. Oh, the bar's set pretty low. 626, 42 degrees out. A new magazine is highlighting life on the south side of San Antonio. Find out how you can catch some of the stories on KSET.com. And the race for space used to be to get to the moon. Now it's to bring back pieces of it. In our next half hour, we're going to see how moon rocks are now becoming a hot commodity. And taking a look outside with Trans Guide, there's a shot of 151 at Loop 410. That's looking okay. Things seem to be running smoothly for the most part, but we're going to check in with Nick after the break. President-elect Joe Biden now planning to roll out tens of millions of doses of vaccine in his first 100 days. I'm Alex Frechet in Washington. I'll have details coming up. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, a beautiful shot of the sun coming up. 6.30 this morning, 42 degrees. We're going to check in with Justin Horn to see what you can expect for the rest of your day. Wow, that was such a beautiful shot. That was very pretty. Good morning. It is Wednesday, December 9th. Thanks for joining us. Uh, it's going to be a beautiful day again. So if you don't like wearing that jacket, just know you're going to take it off eventually. Yeah, in the <laughs> afternoon, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can definitely lose the jacket later today. It, it, it is beautiful out there. We're right at dusk now. Uh, sun will be up here in about 45 minutes or so, and temperatures will warm up once that happens. But it's still pretty chilly right now. 42 degrees, northwesterly wind at about five miles per hour. And I'll caution you: there's a little bit of a wind chill out there. It feels like it's 39 here in San Antonio right now with uh, clear skies. We'll be up around 80 again today. That's where we were yesterday. So a very warm afternoon. We gained something like 42 degrees yesterday from the low to the high. So uh, that, that's typically what you get with these uh, with the dry air that we have in place in clear skies. Uh, let's look at the headlines now. So near record warmth today. It's not quite the record. The record is 85. That was set back in 2008. But we're talking low 80s here, so we're in range. Don't think we'll get there. Uh, some rain chances Friday morning, then a colder Sunday. We could see also a shower on Sunday. So just a heads up there with more cloud cover. Second half of the weekend looks fairly chilly. 35 right now in comfort. We are below freezing in Kerrville, 31 there, 37, Hondo, 39. And Randolph right now in the forecast for today. Texas up to 75 noontime with your high temperature right around 81. Westerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. How's traffic looking this morning? If you're heading out the door, let's check in with Nick. 
Right now, Justin's looking okay. Now, you know, things, a lot of green on the screen here. No heavy pockets of traffic, but we do have an accident we're working on. But first, uh, oh yeah, we do have an accident we're working on here. It's southbound IH-37 at Southeast Military. Should be cleared up anytime. Wanted to show you some drive times, though. 35 southbound from the northeast side of 1604 to downtown. You got a 13-minute ride. And if you're 35 northbound from the southwest side of 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes looking really good there. Okay, trans guide right now. 1604 in Hausman. Traffic definitely starting to pick up there in those eastbound lanes that's going from I-10 to uh, 281 on that area of 1604, 281 at the quarry, that, that's looking okay, and 281 in Grayson, a couple of exits down, going towards downtown, looking good, and going back towards 410, looking okay. All right, well, joining me now is my newest buddy in the art of transportation, <laughs> Samuel King. Sam, what's going on? Well, we have a new closure uh, this morning. It's going to start in about half an hour or so, and it's on MLK Drive today uh, from Badger to Hine. It'll be closed from 7 this morning until 6 this evening. Another two sections will be closed tomorrow, and then the final closures are set to happen on Friday. This is all happening, according to the Public Works Department, because it's going to wrap up after some video production has been completed. And what we've learned is the video Video production is for next year's Martin Luther Jr. King March. It's going to be virtual this year, Stephanie. All right, thank you, Stephanie, for the update. A visit to a home in southeast Bear County did not end well for one man. He ended up in the hospital with a gunshot wound. It happened at a home on DuBose Road, not far from Loop 1604. Our Katrina Weber is live near downtown with details on that story. So, Katrina, have sheriff deputies made any arrests at this time? Well, the last word we had from them is that they plan to talk to several people, but as witnesses. So we don't know yet whether they consider any of them a suspect. Now, Bear County deputies did tell us that the man who was shot is in his 30s. He was visiting someone in that home on DuBose Road when an argument broke out shortly before 11 last night. Deputies say things escalated and someone shot him in his upper body. That man was in critical condition when he left for a hospital in an ambulance. But all the deputies would tell us again is that they plan to talk to several people. We don't know yet whether they suspect that any of those people may have been the one who pulled the trigger. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. A man behind bars this morning after he was arrested for a hit and run crash last week. We first told you about the story right here on GMSA a week ago when police were searching for the suspect. Sarah Costa joins us live from home. So, Sarah, who is the suspect that police arrested? Good morning, Max. It's 48-year-old Eduardo Castillo Lopez. He, police say he walked away from the scene last week, but he was arrested yesterday. Police say Lopez allegedly crashed his truck into a sedan and then took off from the scene, leaving the victim and his truck behind Wednesday of last week. The crash happened around 1030 that night on Fredericksburg Road near DeChantel Road on the city's northwest side. Police say Lopez was turning from Fredericksburg Road when he crashed his black Ford F-150 into a gray Hyundai Accent while turning on a flashing yellow arrow. The victim left behind in the Hyundai was injured and taken to the hospital in critical condition. The second person on that scene also was sent to the hospital with minor injuries. Now Lopez has been arrested and he is facing felony charges of failure to stop and render aid. Reporting live from home, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Max and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. This morning, there is growing optimism in the U.S. that FDA emergency authorization for one of the COVID-19 vaccines might be just a day away. It comes as the number of cases, hospitalizations, and deaths surge across the country. ABC's Alex Pache has more. We're hearing about new restrictions and rollbacks of reopenings across the country, but we're also hearing from President-elect Joe Biden in his plan to roll out a vaccine. A U.S. vaccine on the horizon. Pfizer is poised to get emergency approval for its COVID-19 vaccine as early as tomorrow, after the FDA released an analysis showing how effective the shot was in trials. Look at that blue line. It's the low rate of people who got COVID after getting the vaccine. Now compare it with the red line. That's people on the placebo who got the virus. President-elect Biden vows to distribute 100 million vaccines in his first 100 days. In an interview with CNBC, Pfizer insiders now revealing that government officials turned down an offer for millions of extra doses. Now the White House is reportedly negotiating with Pfizer to secure a second batch of vaccines. Health officials in California say the Thanksgiving surge is now hitting their state. A spike in cases and ICU beds filling up.
We're running out of space, we're running out of supplies, and we have a shortage of providers. Washington state extending its lockdown another three weeks. Massachusetts now rolling back reopenings. And North Carolina announcing new curfews overnight. The stakes are dire. This is truly a matter of life and death. Hospitals in New Mexico are so full now they're transferring patients to neighboring states, Arizona, Texas, and Colorado. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. In your morning headlines, investigators in Galveston trying to figure out what exactly caused this plane crash that ended with at least one person dead. Now, it happened yesterday afternoon when they heard reports of the plane that crashed near railroad tracks. Like I just said, we know at least one person died in the crash, but officials don't know if any other passengers were on board at the time of the accident. The local officials are currently working with the Texas Department of Safety. Brazilian airline Gol became the first in the world to fly passengers on a Boeing 737 MAX jet in nearly two years. It was a round trip flight from Sao Paulo to Belo Horizonte. It comes as Boeing delivers the planes to U.S. airline companies. American Airlines plans to be the first airline in the states to fly passengers on the MAX starting December 29th with flights between Miami and New York. New survey by AAA reporting that men are more aggressive drivers than women. It shows men are more likely to speed, tailgate, merge dangerously, and honk at others. Now, it also found younger drivers of both sexes tend to be more aggressive than older drivers. AAA says you can prevent road rage by avoiding eye contact, not making any gestures, and maintaining space around your vehicle. And our series called Unheard returns this week, and we introduce you to a new collaborator on KSAT.com. April Monterosa is the creator of a magazine that's all about the South Side, and here's her story. I was born and raised on the South Side of San Antonio. I come from a blue collar, middle class family. Uh, they're business owners as well. And I actually bought the house I grew up in, so I still live on the South Side. San Antonio. It's home. I, I mean, even in your neighborhood, it feels like like family. It, it's just been um, it's just been a crazy journey to get here. Now that it's really happening, the response is just something that I never thought would happen. It's that I really hope that my magazine connects my community personally and professionally and, and keeps our small businesses thriving. Uh, I do have a team of contributing writers and the majority of them are from the South Side as well. The magazine is about 60 pages each issue. So there's a combination of personable stories, South Side culture, food. Uh, I have somebody doing a column of sweets and, and treats on the South Side. So it's a combination of different things. I hope that they see how full of culture we are, how our sense of family and unity is just so tight-knit. And I hope that they come and see all of our hidden gems here, because we do have a lot of pretty spots on the South Side to visit. And Live from the South Side stories will begin popping up on our website this month. You can read more about April and the magazine on our website at kset.com. Really excited that we're doing this. Yeah, it's cool. We had a, another uh, a business owner last uh, last month, so I'm looking forward to hearing all the stories. Super cool. All right, time now, 640, 42 degrees out. And a new age space race could be over moon rocks. After the break, we're going to see how much one can cost and how some companies are trying to cash in. NASA pledged in September to buy moon rocks from companies that can get robotic rovers to lunar surfaces and scoop up samples of the dusty terrain. And the space agency, NASA, asked for bids from companies all across the world. The program, which NASA hopes will be completed by 2024, the same year the agency hopes to return astronauts to the moon, is among the most unique in United States history. The goal is not to glean new information about lunar soil composition or study how various lunar resources can be used. 
The goal is actually to encourage the private sector to invest in rover development. And perhaps the primary goal of this project is to make clear that the rest of the world, that the moon is not just a place for exploration and research, it's a place of business. NASA may be the only organization that's currently in the market for buying moon rocks from private companies, but the space agency allowed the companies to name their own price. Not yet clear if any of the companies will succeed in their efforts, though. NASA says it's only going to pay about 10% of the total purchase price price up front. And yes, NASA plans to mail a check for as little as 10 cents. All of this according to NASA's Director of Commercial Space Flight Development. Now, the companies will receive another 10% after their rovers launch into space. And the final 80% will be paid out to the companies after they prove to NASA that the rovers have actually collected lunar soil samples of between 50 and 500 grams, or about a pound when weighed on Earth. Now, the economic incentive for the four companies who have already signed up for NASA new lunar resource program. Not exactly clear, but all of these companies are already well underway developing various lunar exploration technologies. Guys, back to you. Back to all you, right. Nick. All right, thanks, Max. Thanks, Max. Okay, right now I have a couple of stalled vehicles right there. Looks like it's going to go 90 eastbound from 35. Uh, keep that in mind if you're heading that direction. Dealing with this accident here, southbound I-37 at Southeast Military Drive. Should be cleared up any minute now, hopefully. Uh, but just keep that one there if you're on the southeast side. Tenant Pro Bent still looking good right now. Not much going on in the roadways. If you are headed to work, expect a smooth ride like a 10 at Callahan East. That looks good. And uh, we'll do one more here. 37 at Jones. Still looking great right now on that southeast side. All right, Nick. Good. Thank you so much. And, you know, like yesterday, you start with the heater on. No one likes 42 degrees. But then in the <laughs> afternoon, you got to switch that to the air conditioning. It's so nice. Well, some people like that 42 degrees. I yeah, did. Me? You know, sure. December, we, we would... Hope it would get cold a couple days. You know, the, the mornings have been a little chilly. The afternoons warm. Well above average. Today we're going to be above average again. 81, the expected height today. The average, 65. That gives you any sort of comparison. Uh, the record is 85 cent back in 2008. So it's going to be warm area wide today. A lot of low 80s on the map. Some upper 70s there too. Well, look at the sunrise. Soak it in. This is great. Uh, we'll have the sun up here pretty soon, and these numbers will start to turn a corner. But 38 right now, Stinson, 38, Kelly, 39, Randolph. Winds are light. We had clear skies, dry air, cold winds. It's perfect radiation and cooling. That's exactly what, we'll got, what we got right now. But we'll see that uh, a big swing in temperatures uh, a little bit later this afternoon. We could go up some 40 degrees in some cases. 34 right now, Bernie Stage, 31, Kerrville, 34 in Bandera, 37 in Hondo, 43 in New Braunfels. Clear skies there. 44 Del Rio and 38 right now uh, in Gonzales. There's a little bit of a windshield, just enough breeze out there to give you a, a little bit of a windshield in spots. 31 Kerrville, 36 is what it feels like right now in Uvalde. And we mentioned the dry air, dew points, 20s, 30s. It's pretty uh, desert-like air, but as we get into tomorrow, we'll see dew points start to come up, especially late in the afternoon. You'll notice these dew points start to jump into the 50s and uh, even 60s by tomorrow. That's going to lead to some more cloud cover. And eventually, that should give us some fog drizzle, maybe a little bit of rain Friday morning. And that'll be that, that one window where uh, we have some chance to, to get some rain. It doesn't look substantial, uh, but at least it is there. Across the country, it is still remarkably quiet. We've got some showers up there in the Rockies, a couple snow showers with some lake effect snow in New York. And then we're watching this system here. We can see it nicely on water vapor just off the coast of Mexico and California. That's going to be pushing east today starts to move east and that is what will help us generate some showers Friday morning. So the computer models show that we'll get some clouds starting to move in. This is five o'clock tomorrow. Some clouds starting to move in and then uh, Friday morning, seven o'clock showers, drizzle, uh, maybe some fog. So it'll be a damp morning commute on Friday. I think by midday Friday, a lot of this moves out. We'll get some clarity on Saturday and then Sunday, a little different story here than what we've been thinking the last couple of days. Models kind of switched around a little bit in the sense that we think we'll have more cloud cover and with another front there's potential for a couple of showers. So the bottom line here is it will be cooler we think and it could be a little bit wet in spots on Sunday. Just a heads up there. Rainfall so far this year we're at 19.9 for the year still 10 inches almost 11 inches below the average. Del Rio's in bad shape too. You know it's interesting though Austin is actually above average. Uh, so these these things can change, but uh, we hope that uh, we'll at least get something measurable on Friday. 81 degrees, the high temperature today. Westerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sunny skies today in the extended forecast. We'll go 76 on Thursday, partly cloudy. 74 Friday, 30% chance of some morning showers. 66 Saturday, and 
quite a bit cooler on Sunday, 58 with a 20% chance of rain and definitely chilly Monday morning, guys. So a little bit of everything. That's not too bad. A little bit of everything, kind of what you would expect for December. All right. Thank you, yeah. Justin. All right. Thank you, Justin. Time now is 649, 42 degrees out. And researchers are looking at historical data to see how the pandemic could impact college enrollment. Join us tomorrow on GMSA where we look at how college students could increase during this time. And let's take one live look out at the Alamo City. A gorgeous shot out there. Beautiful shot of the sun rising. Going to be a good day. 42 degrees. We'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the coronavirus emergency. Cases exploding in California, prompting an emergency alert telling millions of people to stay home. Big questions, too, about the vaccine emerging now and the new details about how well the Pfizer vaccine works and the possible side effects. We're going to have the retired general, part of Operation Warp Speed, in charge of getting hundreds of millions of doses across this country. Join us live, and you'll see it only here on GMA. A man is spending some time in a hospital after a visit to a home ended with him being shot. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Bear County Sheriff's deputies say that shooting happened during an argument late last night. They found the man shortly before 11 last night, still at the home in far southeast Bear County. They say he was visiting that home on DuBose Road off Loop 1604 when an argument broke out. At some point, someone shot him in the upper body. Deputies told us the man who's in his 30s was in critical condition as he left for a hospital in an ambulance. Well, they told us at the time that they plan to question several people who they considered witnesses, but we don't know yet whether they consider any of those people a suspect. Reporting near downtown Katrina Weber, case at 12 News. Share the Shoes Drive. 2,070 pairs of shoes were collected for children in need. Yay, that's great. That's nearly 1,000 more pairs than our goal. So Case at Community, the San Antonio Police Department, the local nonprofit Zapatos were very helpful as well as several other agencies. And we want to say thank you so much and also to all of you and to Ansira and Shoe Carnival for also stepping in to help. And thank you to all the viewers who also helped in these especially tough times. And coming up today on GMSA at 9 a.m., are you dreaming of a white Christmas? Well, as Justin Hart tells us, we might not get any snow this San Antonio this holiday season, but it doesn't mean you can't make your own snow. That's true. Katie Blake is teaching us how to make fake snow. So for this experiment, you're going to need baking soda, shaving cream, water, a bowl, and some utensils to mix it all up. Don't miss Katie's Science Lab at 9 after Good Morning America. All right, let's take a look at those roadways. Hey, Max, right now things are looking good right now. If you're at the gym, you got time to get that extra set into the gym. Things look good traffic wise. Justin? <laughs> extra set, I like that. Uh, 75 noon time, up around 81 this afternoon. It'll be uh, awful warm, and uh, we'll see temperatures warm again tomorrow. Slight chance of rain coming up Friday morning. Thank you, Justin. Thanks. And thank you, Max, for being here this morning. Max, it was fun. <laughs> thank you for joining us. We'll see you back here at 9.